Hello students, today we will discuss about the gastrulation. Now my dear students, this gastrulation is also a very important short note in your exams. So let us see how to write down this short note in your exams. So as usual, always the first line always is, starts with the definition. So what is the gastrulation? Now my dear students, when you will see the second week of changes in the embryo, you realize that there is a formation of bilaminar germ disc. Now this bilaminar germ disc is having the epiblast and hypoblast layer. Now in the third week, there is a formation of trilaminar germ disc. So it is a process by which you will have a trilaminar germ disc is defined as a gastrulation. So what is the first line? Definition of gastrulation. Gastrulation is a process to form or receive a trilaminar germ disc. Now when you will have the gastrulation, gastrulation take place in the third week of intrauterine life after fertilization. Now there is a one very important question you have so many times that what is the first sign of morphogenesis? What do you mean by morphogenesis? Morphogenesis means that formation of body form. So body form formation starts with the gastrulation. And when you will see the gastrulation, there is a very important structure which appears is known as primitive streak. So there are two different questions. If you will have the question that which structure appears first, answer is primitive streak which is a sign of morphogenesis and if you will have that which is a first sign of morphogenesis that is gastrulation. Now when you will talk about the gastrulation, what is the process of gastrulation? So my dear students, for the gastrulation you will have first formation of primitive streak. So what is primitive streak and how it form is the first step in gastrulation. So primitive streak is nothing but it is a thick linear band which is formed by the epiblast cells. So this what is the uh, question? Question is that primitive streak formed by which cells? Answer is epiblast cells. So you know that this is your disc, bilaminar germ disc. Now on one side you will have the amniotic cavity, on the other side you will have the yolk sac. Now, you are seeing this from above, so for that if you have, you have to remove this amniotic cavity. Now once you will remove the amniotic cavity and you are seeing the disc from above, you are actually seeing this epiblast cell layer. The hypoblast will come on the lower part which is facing towards the yolk sac. Now in this epiblast cell layer, which is a superior layer after removing this amniotic cavity, you are able to understand that there is a formation of thick linear band. But where this linear band will form? This linear band will form in this midline somewhere. So whenever you are writing about the primitive streak, you have to first write down that primitive streak is a thick linear band. It is produced by epiblast cells. But what is the position? It lies in the midline. But in the midline, it is not lying in the whole length of the midline. So where you will find this, if you will see the formation of primitive streak, it will form in the caudal part of your disc, clear? So where it is present? It is, is a thick linear band. Second, it is formed by epiblast cells. Third, it is a midline structure. But here, the word caudal is very important because the primitive streak will not appear in the anterior part. Now you know that in the anterior part, you have already seen there is a formation of precordal plate in the second week. So it is not forming in the area of precordal plate. On the opposite side of precordal plate, the primitive streak will appear. So this is going to form your future mouth. So but obviously this area is the caudal part of the plate. That's why you have to use this word that primitive streak form in the midline but in the caudal area. Now the another thing is that it is on the dorsal surface because the epiblast cell layer is a dorsal surface and the hypoblast cell layer which is facing towards the yolk sac is a ventral surface of the disc. Now the another question comes is that it appears on which day 
answer is 15th day because we are entered into the third week of development and the third week means we are talking after 14 days. So, it is appearing on the 15th day of intrauterine life from fertilization. So, my dear students, these are the few points which you have to remember while writing the short note on the primitive streak and gastrulation. Now, the appearance of streak induces the process of gastrulation. So, it is a acting, it acting as a inducer and inducer means that with the help of the primitive streak, the gastrulation process starts. Now, it decides the cranial and caudal axis, it decides the ventral and dorsal surface, it decides the right and left side of the disc. So, this has become the dorsal surface, this is the ventral surface, this is your caudal part, this is your cranial part and if this is my dorsal side, then this is your right side of the disc and this will become the left side of the disc. So, my dear students, these are the important facts which you have to write down in your exam while writing the short note. Now, what is the second procedure? In the second step, in the primitive streak, there is appearance of a enlarged or dilated area is known as primitive node. So, this is your embryonic disc. In the disc, you have, there is a formation of primitive streak in the caudal part. Now, what will happen that on in the anterior end of this streak, there is a thickening or dilatation appears. So, this elevated anterior end of the primitive streak is known as primitive node and these cells of primitive node also comes from epiblast, clear? So, what is primitive node? Primitive node is nothing but it is anterior end of the primitive streak which enlarged and these cells are also come from epiblast cell layer and it also lies in the midline and the primitive node is also known as Hansen's node, clear? Now, the third step is the formation of primitive groove and primitive pit into these two structure. Now, my dear students, what is happening here that this is your embryonic disc. Now, in the disc, you are having a streak. So, this is your primitive streak. Now, in the streak, anterior end is having the dilated area is known as primitive node. Now, what will happen? There is a appearance of a narrow groove and on the sides of the groove, you are having the bulgings and this in, is formed by the invagination and this is known as primitive groove. So, what is happening? Now, this is, suppose this is your cut section of primitive streak. Now, in the center, there is invagination occurs. Now, once the invagination occurs, you will have a depression or a groove. Now, this groove is present in the whole length of the primitive streak and this groove is known as primitive groove. Now, in the same manner, this is a node. So, in the node, what will happen? There is a small depression will appear and this depression is known as pit. So, a depression also develop into the uh, node and this is also known as blastopore and blastopore or the pit continue with the groove. So, my dear students, we have uh, till now three steps. First, there is the appearance of the primitive streak then there is a formation of the primitive node, then there is a formation of the groove and the pit into the streak and the node, clear? Now, in this diagram, what you are able to understand that the first thing is the shape of embryonic disc. The shape of embryonic disc is a pear shape. It is not circular, it is elongated as the growth is going on. Now, here you can see that there is an appearance of this primitive streak and this dilated end of the streak is known as node. And you are seeing this from the dorsal surface of the amniotic disc after removing the amniotic cavity. Now, the fourth and very important step is migration of epiblast cells. Now, this is the very, very important step in the formation of gastrulation. Now, my dear students, you have to understand here that there are three sets of the uh, layers, one is known as ectoderm, another is known as mesoderm and endoderm. Now, when we are talking about the three layers of the germ disc, you have to understand that all the three layers arises from epiblast. What is the source of the three layer? Answer is epiblast. So, now what will happen that the cells of the epiblast 
migrates. The cells of the epiblast migrates and they will give rise to the two cell layer, one is endoderm, another is mesoderm. And the non-migratory cell of epiblast form the ectoderm. So what we are going to do first here that we will divide the epiblast cells into the two sets, migratory cells and non-migratory cells. Or you can say invaginated cells and non-invaginated cells. Clear? Now, there is a one more important thing is that when the epiblast cells proliferate, now they start migrating towards the streak and migratory cell then detach from the streak and move inwards through the streak. Now, what is the meaning of this? Now, here in this image, you can see that this is your long columnar cells, which are the epiblast cells. And these are the flat cells of your hypoblast cells. Now, my dear students, I am saying one very conceptual line again and again that epiblast is going to form all the three germ layers. Now, here you have to understand that epiblast cell layer migrates and these migrating cell have two sites or you can say future in form of mesoderm or endoderm. Now, Suppose this is the cell of epiblast. Now, these epiblast cells, if they have to form the endoderm, they have to first come towards the primitive streak. And then they leave the streak and then comes downward into the area below the epiblast. So, what is the meaning of this sentence? That there is a one door and through that door, all the epiblast will leave. And what is the name of that door is primitive streak. If the cell has to come out, the cell cannot go down like this. The epiblast cell cannot go down like this. They have to pass through the streak. This is the only door or you can say the gate or you can say the exit into the epiblast layer and through this exit or the door, the cell has to pass. The cells have no other option. They cannot go down directly. The every cell of the epiblast has to migrate towards the primitive streak. Then they have to invaginate through the primitive groove and then they will leave and comes below the this epiblast cell layer. So my dear students, whenever you are writing the migration of epiblast, you have to keep this thing in mind that first epiblast cells proliferate and once they proliferate, all the cells migrate towards the streak. They will migrate towards the streak. Now what will happen? These migratory cells detached from the epiblast and then they will have inward movement which is known as invagination. Clear? And now these cells leave the deep surface of primitive streak and these are pluripotent in nature. This is again a question of your exam. Clear? So now in this image, what you are able to understand that I just explained you that when we are talking about the cells of epiblast, now these epiblast cell layer will first proliferate. After proliferation, they will migrate towards the streak. Then they will leave the streak. Now they will come below the epiblast cell layer once they will get detached. Now when they are getting detached, you can see the shape of the epiblast cells has been changed and now they are become flask shape. They are no more columnar in size, they are now flask shape, clear? Now these migratory cells are going to form two layer. The first thing is that if these migratory cells will start to replace this yellow color line of hypoblast, which you can see here, which you can see here. So if the migratory cells replace this hypoblast layer, then there is a formation of endoderm. The second thing can be done by these migratory cells, they will set in this area between the epiblast and hypoblast and they will form the mesenchyma and mesenchyma further give rise to the mesoderm. So migratory cells have two sets of the future. One, if they will replace the hypoblast, they will form the endoderm or if they will set between the epiblast and hypoblast, then they will form the mesenchyma which is going to form 
mesoderm. So, there are three germ layers. So, how the endoderm will form? Endoderm will form the invaginated cell, displace the hypoblast, and they will form the definitive endoderm. So, there are two things that migratory cells first form the endoderm or mesoderm, answer is endoderm. That is why it is said that the first layer which form in the embryo is endoderm. Now, the remaining invaginated and migratory cells, what will happen? They lies below the epiblast and once they lies below the epiblast, they will give rise to the formation of intraembryonic mesoderm. Now, this intraembryonic mesoderm comes from the mesenchyma and this mesoderm give rise to the different derivatives in the adult human being. While the non-invaginating or non-migratory cells of the remaining epiblast will change and these cells are going to form your ectoderm. Clear? So, now it is clear to you that we have divided the cells into the two set. These are the migratory cells or you can say invaginated cells and these are the non-invaginated or non-migratory cells. Now, what do you mean by invaginated cells? The cells which are passing through the primitive streak and then lies below the epiblast cells layer. Now, the cells which are lying below the epiblast can form the endoderm or mesoderm. So, if they are replacing the hypoblast, then it is going to form endoderm or if they are going to set below the epiblast, they are going to form your mesoderm. So, what are the points to remember? There are two places where mesoderm is absent. One anteriorly, which I already told you, is the precordal plate area, which is a future mouth where you will have buccopharyngeal membrane. The second part where the mesoderm is absent is known as cloacal membrane, which is a future anal opening. So, these are the two areas where you do not have mesoderm. The initiation of primitive streak is controlled by which gene? Answer is nodal gene. Clear? So, these are the some points which you should remember for your exam point of view. Then, there is an applied aspect regarding the gastrulation. This question is also important that if the primitive streak remnant will persist, then what is the disadvantage? Generally, my dear students, what will happen that primitive streak is going to disappear by the end of fourth week. So, this is again a question that when the primitive streak disappear, answer is by the end of fourth week. But if the remnants of primitive streak persist, it is going to form a germ cell tumor which is known as sacrococcygeal teratoma. So, my dear students, it is an area which is known as sacral region and coccygeal region. So, when the baby will, will born, the baby is having a congenital defect into the sacrococcygeal region, which is known as sacrococcygeal teratoma. So, what is the cause of sacrococcygeal teratoma? Sacrococcygeal teratoma occurs if the remnants of primitive streak persist. Now, it is a kind of germ cell tumor. Now, because the primitive streak cells are pluripotent in nature. So, you are having the products of ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm inside this teratoma, but they all are in the incomplete differentiation. So, they are incomplete differentiated mass or different tissues are seen like nail buds, like hairs, like other part of the body tissues, you may find into this sacrococcygeal teratoma. Now, sacrococcygeal teratomas are more common into the female babies and the incidence is 1 in per 37,000 birth. Clear? So, my dear students, now at the end of this lecture of gastrulation, you should have idea about what is the definition of gastrulation, what is the time of gastrulation, what is the initiating factor of the gastrulation, what is primitive streak, primitive node, primitive groove, primitive pit. And the most important thing which is required for the formation of the germ layer is migration of epiblast cells and epiblast cells, migratory cells are going to form. First layer is endoderm, then mesoderm and non-migratory cells is give rise to the ectoderm. So, this is all for the gastrulation. Thank you.